Hello everyone and welcome to the Arena Cast, which is a Total War Arena podcast, as you may know. And I am your host, Axel the Hunter, joined by Overkill Total War. And also Hello. our guest, H for Havoc, which is a bit further along. Hi. And Havoc actually did the artwork that you can see on screen. So sure very juicy. Anyway. We're going to be talking about what has currently been released or re-released for Total War Arena, what is not under NDA, so we're not going to get slammed <laughs> in the face, hopefully. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, we've got a list of topics to discuss and get through them in good time, I think. So, the first one, and obviously the main one that many of you will know, is the first Total War Arena went down on the 1st of March, 2016. <laughs> which, moment, of, moment of silence. Which please. was a sad time for all of us here. Big fans of Total War Arena, of course. So, well, like, I owe my, all my success on YouTube to Arena, pretty much. Like, <laughs> like it, it, it was a huge. Like, if I kept going, I probably would have gotten to where I am now, although a lot longer. Um, but, like, at 500 subscribers, I met Dogbert and he invited me to LA for the Arena event. So, Lucky. yeah. <laughs> It was that was a huge boost. That and Warhammer, pretty much, were the two big things. Yes, for sure. So we were all noticeably sad, and it yes. took CA quite a while to say anything about the game. It was kind of a big thing at the time that they were quite silent, and people started speculating and worrying what was going on. And then suddenly, we found out that Wargaming were publishing Arena with an alliance, the Wargaming Alliance, with CA. It's quite Perfect. an interesting thing to happen. So we had our first closed alpha test weekend in November of 2016. So it was back up online the same year at the end of November. Yeah. So yeah, we've, yep. in hindsight, it felt longer than it was. But it's yes. back in some regard in the closed alpha stage. So we'll probably just mosey on to the Wargaming Alliance in general. Because some people might be like, well, what's, what is the Wargaming Alliance and why, why is it here? Why is it publishing Arena? What happened? Well, Sega and Wargaming have teamed up to publish Arena on the Wargaming platform. And yeah. if you're not aware, Wargaming have a lot of history with publishing free-to-play titles. World of Tanks, World of Warships, World of Warplanes. All no, we the don't world, talk about third We one don't one. talk about third one, but it's... <laughs> world of games that are generally the same theme as Arena. Mm -hmm. 10v10 or more. Multiplayer battles and free-to-play. Yeah. upgrades. Yeah, so very... Very in the same family, let's put it that yep. way. Yep. So what that has actually done is it's allowed CA to focus more on developing the game rather than developing the back end, the stability, the multiplayer, the kind of net code and mm -hmm. all that, which is pretty good. And obviously Wargaming are handling the publishing, marketing and community of Arena now. So that's kind of separated out into two halves, development and publishing. So... Just obviously, just say our thoughts, and I guess so. Overkill, what, what do you think? Well, I, do, I it's a great it's great that it's happened because realistically, the way it was going with just CA handling, marketing, publishing, everything, it seemed like Arena could possibly have been cancelled, <laughs> like if it just became too much for them to focus on, along yeah. with focusing on everything else, it could have been a dud which it kind of was not turning into because they were still updating it regularly, but then it just disappeared. So yeah. I feel like that yeah. was their way to like try to save it from Sega just being like, nah, <laughs> this is dumb. We're not doing this anymore. Mm -hmm. But it's also good for just Total War in general because now look at all the new announcements that we have with the release of Warhammer. They're making multiple games at the same time, like just throwing them out, which is great. Not some new DLC and everything, which is really good. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> And Havoc, what about you? I mean, yeah, I agree. Um, not not bashing, not bashing CA at all because I love Total War. Their multiplayer scene isn't exactly the best, so having a yeah. platform like Wargaming, 
who specializes in very large multiplayer battles, which is what everyone wants to see with Total War, being able to take over that and, like you said, do the back end, do all the balancing and things like that, while having yep. CA do the design side, which they're really good at. They have really good, awesome units, really well done, all that kind of stuff. I really think having them that split, but that alliance really just save total war it was on life yep. support at the end of it and with this alliance really brought it back to life yeah really good points there <laughs> <laughs> i think we're all kind of in agreement of how yeah how the war game alliance has really helped mm -hmm. i think it is and also what they mentioned in a couple of their dev diaries which is actually where we're getting most of these informations from yeah. so mm -hmm. that's the you're only gonna this is <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it's the only safe information stuff that you're gonna yep kind of know already but we're just talking about it. it's the first mm -hmm. arena podcast that we're doing so I'm trying to go through what we know and go on from there so they mentioned that the arena team has been growing since the yeah. game went down which obviously straight away is an indication that they're really putting resources and effort yes. into the title they're not just trying to push it push it away in the corner right so they just rolled off like content creation um artists animation audio character art gameplay programming online services like all these features and parts cogs in the uh, machine needed mm -hmm. to make the great yep. arena machine run very well so so yeah shows quite good investment in the title yeah i think it definitely i mean as you as we've said before you know it was kind of dying with ca having to take everything but with all these Dev Diary stuff coming out, they're really pumping out a lot of content, like showing a lot, a lot of improvement, which definitely shows that it's not dying at yeah. all. Yeah. yeah. Moving on to, they also mentioned that they've been improving backend stability, the deployment, the integration into the mm -hmm. Wargaming platform, gameplay refinements, like the new UI, new minimap, unit overlays, matchmaking, unit types, it's all, <laughs> it's basically like everything about the game is either being reworked or rebuilt and mm -hmm. yeah. improved on, which is obviously good things, good times. Yeah. It just shows that they have used the time between, was it March and November, November yeah. to just push, push the envelope, mm -hmm. get it get it out there again yep. so very exciting yeah, very is yeah and also something that was kind of mine minor mentioned that we haven't really heard anything since is that old closed alpha and beta players will end up with some sort of reward on the final yes. release yes yeah. so obviously nothing official has been said but it's kind of common for titles free to play titles to do this so what what do we think? Have it, do you know what we could get? I, I don't know. I kind of think part of me really hopes for like a unique commander that other people wouldn't get. But at the same time, that's a really, really big thing Yeah. to get. My thoughts are probably more of a unique unit, maybe some different kind of loot op options or consumables, maybe even something, I mean, honestly, even something as basic as a, a lot of experience from the very get-go that you can spend on units or gold or silver, any of that stuff. Um, even something as low as that, I think, would be pretty sweet. Hmm. What do you think? Just to kind of give you a good head start. Well, I was honestly thinking probably something like cosmetic, even up to mm -hmm. in-game currency slash experience. I, like, that's what I always think with, like, free games. Because, like, a unit... If they were going to make something really, really special, a unit, I think, would be the biggest that they could go. Mm -hmm. But e even that, I feel, would be a bit too special. I don't know. Unless it's one that everybody can get, like, later on, if you pay, like, a lot. Right. If it's something that they just give you, then, yeah, that's fine. But at the same time, then when everybody else starts getting this unit, it's not really special anymore. So, yeah. I think, I think like, a cosmetic item or something would be... No, I could see that. For sure, yeah. especially because there are yeah. customization options for different units. So yeah, yeah. Because yeah, like I... um, humble humble bundle gave a shield. Um, being a alpha tester, the original alpha gave you like a helmet or something, didn't it? For different units. Yeah, I think so. So I could see that being it, pretty sure. much. Yeah, I definitely agree. It could be some sort of uh, customization 
onto your units so you can like, oh hey look, I'm I'm a veteran of arena. Right, special, Check right. me out. Check my oh, yeah, new that would shield. Be cool too, if it if it is something exclusive cosmetically that lets people know you were an alpha yeah. person, you know, even if it says alpha on a shield or something, you know, <laughs> like just yeah. just something that's like, oh hey, cool, those guys have been around for a while. Yeah, I think it's kind of separating units or like a commander would just be unthinkable. Like, yeah, it'd have Absolutely. to be something that can be unlocked normally, and maybe we just get mm -hmm. it early. Like, something like that could be a better, yep, a better workaround than complete exclusivity. Yep. I think for sure. All right. So one interesting uh, point that was mentioned in I think it was the first Dev Diary is that they have ambitions to move on to early medieval times, yes. including gunpowder units. Yes. Obviously, new factions, commanders, nations, technology on that. So, yes. awesome. Like, <laughs> I would well love to see even not just gunpowder units, like full-on naval battles with mm -hmm. ships of the line. You can control three ships of the line. And, yeah, I just... Yes, I'm, naval it, battles would be amazing. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> No, well, because I was talking to some people before the closed alpha, uh, or before the alpha closed originally, and someone had done some digging and had seen unit names and stuff for Carthaginian units. Uh, yeah. Like, I think some people had seen uh, samurai, some people had seen war elephants, some people, you know, just things like that. So absolutely more factions besides your typical standard big Roman factions. And then absolutely medieval. I mean, they could go so many ways with it. And I'm super excited for it. Like, I'm yep. unbelievably excited for it. Yep. What do you think, Overkill? You got got any suggestions on what we, our speculations? Well, I, I, I would say for sure, probably one of the first new factions that would come out, I'm hoping, would be Carthage. Mm -hmm. Because that was something that was talked about in the original Alpha as, like, what they wanted to do. But yeah, going into, like, Medieval, even, even Napoleonics was a, a factor last year that mm -hmm. was talked about so i don't know <laughs> all, think, all of those i'd be fine i'd be really happy with honestly yeah yeah i mean yeah obviously i don't know just that be... they could put out something that wouldn't that people wouldn't be happy with i mean honestly yeah well obviously this is like something that's so far in the future oh yeah we've got to get the core yeah. original gameplay there first yeah. but all stuff that's like would be awesome like either you could progress from ancient to like early modern or whatever times or you go all right i'm gonna play napoleon uh napoleon yep. era today i'm gonna play you have different theaters or something uh, medieval and then like you can switch around but you need to have a player base that is yes ridiculously through the roof to even consider doing something like that oh right or else like what if your ancient times pop period got really unpopular because obviously people had moved on then it would right. be difficult. You, yeah, yeah, it would be there would have to be a balance. You'd have to be able you'd have to keep people playing all three. You know, of course all of us Total War YouTubers having, you know, all of those eras would naturally play it, but you have to get all those other people. Um you have to get them to stay in the Roman era, but also be able to dig in the medieval or Napoleonic and et cetera, et cetera. And then it's not even it's not even getting everybody to play the three things. It's that all the different tiers will then also have their own smaller player bases in them. Right. So like Tier yep. one on a unpopular theater won't be played like at all, right? For example, or mm -hmm. even up to like tier three. If we're going off like the world of games, I mean, I know even tier one games and world of tanks, it's hard to get. Yeah. Well, that's the and way. Every, that's the way like, before Alpha closed. That's the way it was too. You know, if you yeah. played, if you had tier one on a faction, you didn't play much. You were either playing with some tier fives in that game, or yeah. you were just having you know four v fours because there was only four people available at that time that were at tier one. So, yeah, a lot of balancing will have to be done, but I'm excited for it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Also a major, major thing that they just announced with a kind of a little bit of a 360 was Boudicca. New commander, obviously. Yep. Yep. I would imagine she's going to be put into the Barbarians and not as a separate kind of Celtic yeah, would, faction, yep. unless maybe that is going to be a thing where they split Germanic, Celtic... Any other barbarian? It could be because there's a lot I mean, of barbarians <laughs> back in the ancient era. Well, Although... anyone who weren't Romans were considered yeah, barbarians. exactly. So, so... Like... <laughs> Iberian, yeah, I cool. Gaulish, like Baltic, like every barbarian could have a different 
for sure. Subsection. Yep. Unless you can have like a long list of barbarians <laughs> and about this much Romans and so for everybody else, yeah. 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 I'd be interested to see how they're planning on doing that. But mm-hmm. obviously Boudicca a bit about her, like not gonna do a history lesson here, but <laughs> she was the queen of the Iceni tribe, obviously in Britain. Oh, East Anglia region, I think, is where they're from. Uh, so, yeah. and she was the leader of an uprising against the Roman Empire in about AD 60 or 61. So that's her role sacked in London. history. Yeah, she sacked London. Londinium, I think it's called. Then got wrecked by the Romans. Yeah, just, just a bit. Decimated yeah. by the Romans. Oh, it's terrible. But yeah, like, obviously, we don't know her abilities. We don't know her specialization. Like... Uh, what, do you think? Chariots. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? Let's Hopefully. start off with you. What was that? Sorry. So, Did you say st- me? St- yeah. <laughs> start off okay. With you. Yes. Hopefully, with her being into the game, um, we will see chariots brought in with her because obviously that was a big Britannic thing was to use light chariots and javelins was like their main thing. Um, she might also be like a more dedicated cavalry barbarian commander. Mm-hmm. Maybe, mm. because of course, like uh, Versen is like infantry kind of berserker kind of play style. Um, <sighs> Arminius, Arminius is more like sneaking around, getting around fast, right? You know, so maybe she'll be like a chariot cavalry kind of commander, which would be nice because playing barbarian cavalry was like my favorite thing. Mm-hmm. So yep, definitely, um, it'll be nice to have someone that gives them a lot more power where they are the lightest cavalry in the game. It'd be nice if someone made them a bit more beefier and brought chariots into the mix. I'd like that a lot. Yeah, yeah I think awesome. you could definitely have some really good tactics with the chariots. Um, either as a skirmish mode, I imagine, because, I mean, just the way they've done a lot of things, you know, you probably have your light chariots in the beginning, or at least maybe like at tier two or three, and then at tier 10, you're going to have kind of, I would imagine they would probably put side chariots kind of bypassing historical accuracy, but, you know, just for the sake of gameplay, but you could definitely do a lot of cool things. They could tear through units pretty easily and just have that intimidation factor. Um, But yeah, there's a lot of things that they could really do with Boudicca that I think would be pretty cool. Yeah, because as you both kind of covered, like you've got Arminius, and you've got Vercingetorix. Vercingetorix being the heavy, Arminius being the light infantry, kind of the buff, very mm-hmm. infantry focused. I think Arminius has a little bit of cavalry kind of sprinkled mm-hmm. in there. I mean, yeah. He was, he was the cavalry commander because yeah. Vercingetorix had nothing, nothing yeah. for them. Basically, yep. he has his only. But Boudiga could be a mixture of ranged and cavalry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, he could easily yep, be on that side as well. So, obviously, a lot of stuff about ambushing, ambushing yep. Romans and. Kind of standing against them, like you got to think about abilities here. Like, yeah, is she going to be that much different to Versus Gedrix or Arminius? Like, vengeance against Rome, like right. frenzy and kind right. of well, I imagine. I mean, I imagine she'll have, have her berserkers type of units. Um, she'll probably, I mean, she'll probably be the lightest on the infantry side since you have Arminius and Versus Gedrix. But you know, I mean, she did sack London. She did put up a pretty good stand and almost ousted the Romans. So I'd imagine she has at least some sort of abilities against Romans that, uh, at least in her abilities, I would think. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say it would be against Romans, but kind of like how... Like based on that. Germanicus has got his vengeance, like, kind right. of yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. So Boudicca would have to have something like that prominent mm-hmm. for her. So it's something that I think is going to be very interesting to see when she does come out. Because I don't think either any of us really know what abilities she could have but maybe yeah. focused on it, it really to me it completely depends on if she gets chariots because if, right. if chariots aren't brought in i know they will eventually because like it was a big thing in ancient warfare of course but if if they're not brought in with her she's going to have abilities that don't focus on that and right that's what i'm wondering like what could they be if not for cavalry and chariots and ranged and mm-hmm. so i don't know absolutely yeah all right then moving on also mentioned potential new game modes, which yep. is a big, a big thing if it comes to fruition. <clears throat> Obviously, like uh, what would we like to see, and uh, what do we speculate about that? So, we can start with you, Havoc, for this one. Well, naturally, King of the Hill. Um, even a free for all kind of scenario, if they could, I doubt they would. Um, but it would be even it would be even cooler to see 
you have, you know, two sides of 10 units. Well, why not break it into four sides of five as a free for all or something like that? Um, and then, of course, that goes along with all new maps and things. You're going to have to, I mean, we have our standard Roman city. We have our standard Greek city. We have a forest. We have stuff. But, like, we've seen Hadrian's Wall, um, you know, things like that. Really almost like siege style battles would be kind of cool to bring in as well. Yeah. How about you, Avakel? Yeah, well, like the uh, the King of the Hill idea, I feel like is a natural, that'd be a good one. Because, I mean, like all the world of games have capture the enemy base or the game mode where you ca there's one in the middle that you have to both focus on. So that's obviously something that I could see them bringing in. Um, but like you said, like you touched on, I think Siege would be amazing. Because like we talked about this, like with um, actual equipment that your units could man yep. to actually break through the walls or get over walls, break gates. Ladders, siege towers. That is what I'd love to see if possible. Mm -hmm. I think that would be a lot of fun. Yep. Yeah. Hopefully it wouldn't be a little bit too involved for the free-to-play scene, but a siege game mode where you've got one team attacking and they do have to pull along the um, rams, the ladders, the siege mm -hmm. towers, and they have to get in, get over the walls and into the base. But it might have to be balanced so it's not 10v10 because yeah. obviously it'd have an well, advantage right. being mm -hmm. a defender, especially if your defenders had mostly ranged units. Like They could easily right. wipe out yeah the attacking well, forces and there's, i mean there's different ways you could definitely balance that you know neither side gets to bring in artillery but there could be artillery on the defending side or something you know there could just be random catapults trying to break down the walls or something you know there could be ways to balance it because it would suck to be in a 10v10 all the time and then all of a sudden you get thrown in a siege at a 6v10 you know i understand the balance and everything but i think there i think the 10v10 will have to stay they'll just have to figure out how to balance it yeah yeah very, very hard. I think sieges, to sieges would be very fun. <laughs> but yeah, I, think I would sieges. really enjoy siege. Side. And also with awesome. uh, with different kind of game mode things, with uh, war gaming, kind of taking over with that kind of stuff, they do historical events in their other games. Yes. So, I mean, not mo not so much with World of Tanks. I think they do it, but like they don't force you to play like certain things. It's like, whatever. But like with the the new Dunkirk event that War Gaming did with World of Warships, right. where it was only ships that would have been there against German AI. Like, it was right. vehicles that weren't even in the game that they used for that event. So, like, that's cool. if they did that with Arena, where you could do, you know, like a historical battle can only use Greeks and Romans, can only use Romans and Barbarians or something like that. Right. I think that'd no, be that'd pretty be really interesting. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's definitely. a really good point there. Because you could just have reenactments of Canet, of... Uh, all the major the battles and, like yeah. if siege mode well uh sacking rome as a barbarian yeah. faction or right or like burning you down know you Carthage. super historical things like right. the siege of alicia yeah um by caesar and things like that like where the yeah. romans are having to fight on two fronts basically you know inside of alicia and as well as outside that would be a really interesting thing as well that would be a cool take on the siege that kind of thing you're kind of surrounded and you yeah. have to fight off so yeah Really, really cool. Yeah, interesting that would be really there. interesting. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> onto, onto a few unit things, I guess. A bit of a bit of segue. Um, they mentioned that they were redeveloping the unit trees. So, obviously, in the previous alpha, it was... It, I won't say messy, but kind of testing the waters, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. obviously, they were trying their hardest to get it all working mm -hmm. together, but there's it seems to be that they just want to really nail every portion of the game, which I fully expect them to be able to do. Right. Yeah. Well, war gaming the way it is, absolutely. They have some pretty good tech tree styles, and uh, definitely think it'd work out for the best. Just yeah. kind of having yeah. more a more natural navigation rather than the. It wasn't bad, but like you said, you know didn't seem like they were 100 percent knew what they were doing and they were definitely testing the waters and seeing how things would work yeah for sure so one thing that had just come out today actually on a dev diary we're all like scrambling to watch it and yeah. <laughs> analyze it uh that units are now grouping stats into four categories yes. aggression defense survivability and mobility yep so initially you might go oh wait, they got rid of all the stats, like melee attack and melee defense. No, that's not the case. 
It's just that now you can quickly assess... It's a very general, yeah, you can general look at the stats. Assess your units yep. compared to other units that you might... Oh, I've got these um, Tier 8 Eagle cohorts. Like, how do they compare to the um, the Barbarian Tier 8 Chosen Swordsman, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but whatever it is, like, you've got to compare, oh, well, I'm more right. powerful and aggressive, but I'm not as powerful in this. So you can figure out where you want to progress as well. Yep. To well, what again, your like, they, is. like they said in the video, you hover over that attack and it breaks everything down. Yeah, you hover yeah. over defense, it breaks everything down. But it's just a good general comparison stat. But what they actually yeah. mentioned as well is like it's now obviously easier to compare units, but it's also like more of the stats that are actually visible in the game. Like it looks like the right, less yeah. stats are visible, but like you said, you hover over and it tells you all the stats that work towards influencing the aggression, like, or defense or mobility. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really interesting. You can really break down, like, why is this unit better than right. this other unit, which should be better or the same, or you can mm -hmm. really, really focus it. And there'll be a lot of people, when the game comes out, nitpicking away and finding out, yeah. like, what units are going to be the best units. Right. And obviously well, when they rebalance also... it and it's going to be all work in progress. So all good to see like fit stats changing over time. Mm -hmm. Always good for these titles because it always happens. Right. Well, it's a good thing just because there are going to be those people who aren't meta heavy. They literally yeah. just want to see if this thing is has more of an attack than this one unit instead of seeing melee attack and charge defense and shield block and all that stuff just being able to see a general stat and compare it quickly so you can get back mm -hmm. into the next battle or just know where you want to go it's just for those of you who aren't super super like i need to know every single thing you can just get some good general stats now and it's not overwhelming yeah definitely definitely and one thing they mentioned as well is that they were trying to focus on at least one unique unit type or play style for each faction which I think is not anything new, but it seems to be mm -hmm. like the th trying to really push it. So you yeah. saw in the video that there were Falksmen for the Barbarians, which weren't in the previous Alpha. Mm -hmm. They're new units, and they're unique to Barbarians. You don't have Falksmen right. for any other faction, so it's kind of mm -hmm. really, really there. A Falksman being very aggressive, two-handed, not very good defense, so Barbarians yeah. even boosting the aggressive style even more quick right. in and out so i really do like the fact that they're trying to make the factions even more unique on top of mm -hmm. how unique they are already right which is pretty awesome yep yeah yeah i'll be very excited to uh, run versus getter and falksman <laughs> yeah <laughs> that'll be nice yeah. Utica, not so much no, no, I don't think she'd have much to offer. No, no. <laughs> yeah. And also one thing that they mentioned in that Dev Diary, the new one, is about friendly fire. Yes, Obviously, I, like, previously, I it was quite, well, not difficult to tell you were friendly firing. Like, it was being bad. friendly fired on, you were right. always telling people. Well, and then there's always the all caps. Yeah. You're friendly firing me, you mother. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot yeah, of... That was always uh, your pretty good warning that you were friendly firing. Of but... Assault and aggression from the chat. It was chat. also bad to end a game with like minus 2,000 points you didn't know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so now they're literally like almost to the fact of like red alert, lights going off, like you are friendly firing, yes. stop friendly yes. firing. Like it <laughs> There's does. There's an alert at the top of the screen. There's yeah. an alert over your unit card. There's an alert going on like there are yeah. red alerts going on everywhere which is i think is really good yeah it's they literally to make like, it more prominent somewhere where you're looking in the ui you're going to see that you're causing orange friendly fire yes. damage or a unit card or a big banner yeah, I, or a ping it's like it's all mm -hmm. it's telling you you're friendly firing which i think there's at least three different ways that they're showing that you're yeah. doing friendly fire so they're like good. It might i also like bit... how they said that uh they turned friendly fire off for a while just to see how it worked. And it they did a really good point because it takes all of the strategy. If I know I can just shoot arrows into the enemy, yeah. regardless of your friendly fire, then it, it, it takes a lot of strategy out. Well, so it, it also makes them, it makes them a lot stronger as well. Like if you're not mm -hmm. hurting your own units, like huge advantage over yeah, the enemy. Just fire mm -hmm. all day and 
Yeah, you get more people using archers, and then you just get a couple of units that have good staying power, and you could yep. just decimate them. Like but. put put like let's say like mid tier thorax hoplites mm-hmm. in a line. Like sword units have a hard time killing them, and if arrows and sling and uh, like rocks, javelins, whatever, just raining in, not killing your own troops and just the enemy. Yeah, super that's OP. A huge, huge advantage. Super Big OP. exploit. Yeah. Yeah. It would so I'm, glad it it's, I'm glad it's not. I'm glad it's not out. Because it yes. should be there. Absolutely. Yeah, it definitely, definitely needs to be there. We're all in complete agreement there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But yeah. And also something about points that you mentioned about friendly fire points. Uh, the, there's a new point system. Like how it rewards you while playing the game. Before, it was very, very focused on how many kills you got. How much damage yes. you did. Yes. Yep. But now kind of attributing you to more roles, even roles that you might not expect, like just holding choke points, kind of being useful to the team by supporting, I think is kind of like if you're holding archers and they're firing over you, you're kind of blocking them. I think that's kind of something that they're going to be giving you points for. Maybe not loads, you're not going to get millions of points for (laughs) stopping there and helping a friendly unit, but it's better than you charging off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, uh, yeah, like just that it. idea of if you're able to hold something and you have a friendly that comes in and hammer and anvils them, you know, you should get support because you allowed yeah. that hammer and anvil to happen and that changed the battle dramatically. So absolutely adding more roles in which you gain points for is super critical. Because that's, uh, that's something that I always had trouble with was playing Greeks, playing hoplites, because they don't kill. Yeah, they just so have you get like... holding power. So you're doing really good. Like, you're not really dying, but you're not really killing anyone. And then someone comes in with, say, Principes and charges into the rear of the enemy you're fighting, and they slaughter them, and they have, like, thousands of points, and you have, like, a hundred. Right. And it's like, well, that was all because of me that you got to do that, but I don't get yep. anything for it, mm-hmm. which is yeah. not good. But I'm yep. glad that they're offering more ways to get points other than just straight-up killing because it made cavalry and sword units, like, the best. Absolutely. Yeah, yep, it was I kind agree. of the point where... It rewarded people being reckless and yeah. very against the team, like by just charging to get points mm-hmm. and obviously being a strategic game at its heart. If you leave avenues open to the enemy, they can easily get around, kill your artillery, kill your range units, and then you yep. can lose the battle just by simple attrition mm-hmm. because most of your team was just blindly charging. Just into... going after kills yeah. for points. Yep. So it's good to changing it and trying to focus more on rewarding people for the different roles on the battlefield, which yeah, everyone's yeah everything happy for. <laughs> everything we've seen so far has really, really pointed towards teamwork and really emphasizing that you will win if you can work together as a team. Not yoloing with your cav on the other end of the map, but definitely just supporting, helping flank each other, helping support each other everywhere. It's really, really good, and I like that because it again brings in strategy. You know, every Total War YouTuber, every Total War player loves that strategy aspect. Yeah. So really, really focusing on that has helped. Yeah, it wouldn't be Total War or Total War Arena without a strategy element on top of mm-hmm. the kind of fast-paced kind of action that we all know and love. Yep. So definitely, definitely a good thing that. Also, one thing that they've done to, I think, significantly improve the game is the tactical map. Or yep. the, uh, well, the fact that the mini-map and the tactical map have kind of merged into one, rather right, than yeah. in previous Total War, like the general titles, you could press tab and the camera would just go right out and you could see the battlefield Everything. from kind of like more yeah. of a 2D perspective rather mm-hmm. than a 3D. And it was great, like you being able to see, oh, my units are here, they're out of position, I need to move them. And, and it kind of, it was okay in Arena, but most of the time you were so busy keeping an yeah, eye on everything was... and using your abilities and manually doing things because in the arena yep. you have to manually charge and like you don't do it automatically yeah. like in the previous Total War titles. Right. It's its own yep. thing. So having the minimap showing what you need to know is quite important because before it didn't really show you any information. It was basically pointless apart from showing this is what the map sort of looks like in right. the corner. <laughs> so yeah. Pretty much. Definitely worth it having it there. And obviously being UI, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller. Like I'm hoping in the future you'll be able to like just simply move 
UI elements to your own to preference. Your, yep, your own personal setup. That'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, definitely would. So I don't think really, we've all kind of agreed on that point. It's the thing to go for. It's and... it's definitely something I personally never used. Yeah. Was looking at the the tab map. I never used it. I don't even use it in I the actual Total lot. War games. I used it a lot with Arena. I've hardly ever used it for regular Total War. But I definitely did just to see if I had some downtime or if I just saw something out of the corner of my eye that I couldn't really focus on at the moment. I would tab real quick just to see what was going on there, see an engagement, and know I could go another direction. But definitely wasn't enough to be such a prominent feature yeah. as to keep it. So. Yeah, I feel like a mini-map that just shows everything is much better than a separate thing that you have to open yourself and right. and look at. Yeah, it kind of detracts you from the game. Like, it's mm -hmm. you've yeah. got a certain pace going, a certain feel. Like you got, And then all of a sudden you're just like, oh, they're like, oh, oh no. <laughs> all right, all the hype is gone. I'm looking at a map now. It's like, <laughs> it kills... It kills the momentum of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. And that can throw you off, like in a in arena where you need to be quite aware of yep. what's going on. Yeah. So it's it's good. It's good that they've uh, made that change. So yeah, move on to the next point on the list. Maps are sorted into tiers, where the simpler yes. maps are on the yes. lower tier scale, and complex maps for higher tiers. Now. Yes. I don't think this is necessarily a new feature, but it means we can segue into the new maps that we know of in the game that have been released for public knowledge. Uh, Capitoline Hill being a low tier map and Hadrian's yep. Wall being a more complex map. Yes. So I guess just the fact that they're pretty cool. I don't know if we can actually detail what the maps are and stuff like that because it's not yeah. properly yeah, shown probably not <laughs> so probably let's avoid just, that avoid it <laughs> avoid that but we can I probably just, that too yeah just the fact that cups like... lines the lower tier map it's kind of designed for startup gameplay and then the hadrian's wall is more complex so it shows like they're yeah. trying to really work the game the maps and the positioning of tiers for right how proficient you should be at this level what complexities or what in complexities you need to be able to enjoy the game to its maximum level. Right. I think like without without really naming any maps, we've already seen from like even the previous test and you know, um that like some maps all maps have like three lanes, like the middle and then the left and right. Um a lot of them were just as simple as that, but there were some maps that you could still flank on lanes. So right. like there was the open lane, but there were still other ways to get around. Whereas some maps, right. it was just you always fought in the same spots every time. So like, I feel like um, Capitoline Hill will probably be more open, so that it's just straight up lanes. You know where the enemy is pretty much all the time. And Hadrian's Wall will probably have more. Well, yeah, I mean, that, yeah, yeah, there'll be a lot of where non, non see ability. You won't be able to see units very well until they're yeah. right around the corner in the wall. Oh, hey, what's up? You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good point to piggyback on to that you mentioned about not being able to see things, is that <laughs> the new arena commander, uh, camera should I say, has kind of it's come a bit closer in than the previous tighter. one. It's a lot tighter, yes. And I think there was a bit of a hubbub about that being a bad change, I think, seeing it on uh, social media and stuff like that. But right. let's just weigh it up here, because Obviously, it changes your line of sight, so you can't see as much what's going on. You have to be really focused on the game, and mm -hmm. it turns it into more of a kind of reactive game rather than a, oh, I see that unit. He's about yeah. like two minutes away from me. I, I know what's going to happen. He's coming. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. I just wait for him. Instead of like, I'm closed in. I'm kind of feeling a bit tense i don't know if someone's going to come around this this corner like it's yeah it's a bit more reactive you've got to be very alert right well and i think again it just focus it's even just another factor of really wanting to focus on teamwork you can't see as well so you need to make sure that your flanks are secure which means you need to know where your teammates are and you all need to coordinate because you don't want to get surprised so having a tighter field of view obviously means you have to rely on your teammates more or yeah. else you're screwed. 
Yeah, for sure. Because again, yeah, like you said, you could see, well, I know that guy is, you know, he's 30 seconds away with some cav on my left flank. I can now move over. I don't have to rely on my teammate who's back there wondering yeah. if he sees it or not. Now you have to be like, well, teammate, what's going on? You know, you need to call out and say, hey, you've got cav coming. You need to move in because I can see it, but you can't. So it'll be a lot more important for um, people to defend archers and stuff as well, because if you can't see far yep. away, yep, it's going to be bad. Yeah, definitely. Yes, indeed. And it does break. just adds more strategy. Yeah, that's yeah. Like. that's the point. And I say I say you can't see far away. I mean, of course, you're always going to be able to move the camera all over the entire map. But if you're looking at your own units and say a unit of cavalry is running right towards you and someone doesn't tell you, right, yep. it'll be right on top of you before you even see them, and that's way too late. <laughs> so absolutely, yeah, more salty uh, range players, I think. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, and also the fact that oh, well. With range, you could easily run away because you saw them, like, right. easier. Mm -hmm. So, yes. it's easier to trample those juicy blobs of archers. <laughs> That's right. Get, mm -hmm. get more points. Your cab. Mm -hmm. All you about see. the points. Yeah. So it does, it does, like, enhance the skill ceiling as well. Like, yeah. really, you can focus on making this a game that's easy to get into, harder to master. Yes. Which is the kind which of the recipe it for... Fun kind of it's like the golden rule of making a game like this like mm -hmm. popular in new players and experienced players maybe even right. getting to the point where there could be tournaments and oh, all definitely. that well, juicy and juicy with more esports gaming, game more play. events yeah events yeah like mm -hmm. actual um like live streamed you know phys like events where people go to play because and not even just that like even more just focused events like Wargaming does with their other games. They invite people. I mean, like with World of Tanks, all the major YouTubers and stuff get to go to Tank Fest in right. uh, England. Like yeah, every I wouldn't year. mind going to That's... Arena Fest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah. with World of Tanks, right. you can look at the things that are actually in the game in real life because they're actually still here. Right. But, like, even if, like, I don't, I don't even know what they could do, but I know Wargaming will be able to host those a lot more then CA alone would be able to, right. which is nice. Yeah. Yep. I think they did the Russia event for Arena's kind of re-release into the world Yeah. when Wargaming took it over, obviously. And they had people kind of dressed up as Romans, I think. Like full-on yeah. Lorica Segmentata, like the Centurion helmets, mm -hmm. the... Scotland Shield and right. the Gladius is like full on yeah. kitted out, like being there, just like well, they just stood there like glorious, like yeah, uh, just, right, <laughs> basically like nutcrackers yeah. on the uh, stage. But it was interesting. It was really cool. It but was who cool. knows? Yeah. They could even do like reenactments, like for fun. Yeah, like trying yeah, to. That's the thing get, you never know. I'm sure together gaming will have something though. Phalanx, like all together, trying to hold. These that heavy, heavy hoplon shields. Cool. That'd be pretty legit. <laughs> but yeah, it could. There's a lot of things that they could do. Wargaming does the events, like you mentioned. So yeah, and they have they have, they have the funds to be able to, like right. If they, so they wanted have, yeah. to, they could make an event for the game. Like I don't know, because like like I said, with with World of Tanks, they just piggyback on Tank Fest and do special things there. But yeah, I think they have a full on like Wargaming festival, which is where Arena was re-release so it's not just mm -hmm. yeah. separate events it's also they kind of come together and yeah. they have quite large um showings at gamescom and stuff right. like that they tend to yeah, they really put on a big thing stuff too because i was there like two or three years ago and there was a massive yeah. like wargaming booth which right. was just really quite impressive to see so yeah, arena arena will get there It'll have, get a, have there. its own section, I'm sure. It'll take it a couple of years, but it'll, it'll get there. Yeah. I mean, it, the, I think they were at um, E3. I think it was playable as Arena at E3. I think. I think I'm so. Sure. So I, you would assume that it's going to be playable at Gamescom, which is next month, actually. It's not far away. Ooh. Yeah, so if anyone who's watching this wants to uh, fly me out there, I'd, I'd, be, <laughs> with that. I'd, I'd be okay, believe yeah. me. But obviously, <laughs> the biggest UK games festival is EGX, and that's a month after Gamescom. So if Arena's going so there, there we go that too. I'm already going to EGX, so mm. hopefully wish Arena's going to be there as well. Looking I forward wish to I could. it. Does that's kind of a bit of a bit of segue 
into a different part of uh, more the events and kind of esports and tournament right. gameplay, I guess. But also get back onto the game itself, I suppose. Um, <laughs> that they've actually announced that spawn points are being brought back into the closed yep. alpha due to popular demand. So if you obviously you've not played the new build, and obviously this is not NDA knowledge now, that it wasn't there. Like it goes it was just gone. Yep, you were just and automatically was, assigned. Yeah, and that was something that was kind of like, whoa. It's like, oh that's not very good. This is not what arena is, and mm -hmm. people told CA and they told Wargaming that. And guess what? They it changed back. And they changed yeah, it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is always good. It's always good to have a community when they come together and do something and then the developer listens. Yeah, so it's, it's that's just, crucial for the success. The fact that they are so adaptable to our feedback and improvements. Mm -hmm. And it's probably more important than ever to give them your feedback. Like they send out surveys, yes. like if you play answer the them. weekends, answer them. Even if you're just Be saying detailed. I like it, like just say I like it because X, <laughs> even if it's right. I like it because I like playing Germanicus, like I like something it because like that. Fun points. Well, yeah. and again, like you also have to think this is as much as this kind of style of play is new for CA from a design standpoint and everything, it's also a completely new venture for wargaming. They haven't done this. I mean, tanks, you're talking about a single tank unit, uh, world of warships, it's a single warship. It's a single airplane. You have a hundred units, three, you know, three cards. So you're dealing with thousands of people. And so it's a whole different type of strategy yeah. than world of tanks or any of this other stuff. It's ancient warfare. So, Feedback is definitely needed because this is a new venture for balancing and for abilities and stuff like that. Yeah, so. balancing is a lot more interesting. It's, it just, it's just a lot more, it's a lot less simple because it's not just you click, shoot the gun, it hits the target, it does between this and this damage depending on right. how much it goes through the armor or whatever. Like, it's, yep. yeah, there's a You're now forcing huge... your units to charge. You're now forcing your units to wall up. You're now forcing your units to do X, 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 X. So, yep. yeah. Feedback's critical. Yeah, it's feedback absolutely is critical. Any for game, the success of this any game. game. Mm -hmm. But if you want Arena to succeed, like just throw all the feedback you can onto the forums. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't say social media because it it won't really get picked up. But you could probably ask them where's best to post it or whatever. But yeah, right. just just tell them. Tell them what your opinions are and try and be constructive. Yes. About yeah, it. don't be like your game sucks. Yeah, <laughs> like that's not. Well, oh, this unit's not balanced. You're sh you're really bad at balancing. Like yeah. it's just awful, absolutely awful. I'm never playing this ever again. Yeah. yeah, if you have a really bad experience, be constructive. Well, I played as a unit of swordsmen, and I went up against you know my art these archers, and I and got they ripped. lost. Yeah, like 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 instead of wrong saying here. <laughs> yeah, and just be like say that like it's something's wrong. And it right. needs to be fixed instead of just being like this unit's don't, absolute garbage i'm yeah, never going to use this ever again don't be salty just yeah. be constructive because that's oh, the only way keep, that it really helps keep it to a sprinkle of salt instead yeah. of the uh, yeah. whole tasteful Not the whole thing <laughs> <laughs> okay oh, on to the last couple of points of the podcast uh something that i mentioned that commander abilities are now unlocking over time yes which is quite interesting and they are also customizable by spending your XP on talent, uh, which improve the ability and also add a kind of a spin of uniqueness to your yep. commander. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess we'll just jump right into it. Like, Ovkill, what do you what do you think about this? Well, I like it in a way. It's on leveling up and you can kind of tailor it to how you want it to be like if you're like oh i can either spend points on this ability or this ability and it's like well i don't personally use this ability with the units that i like playing mm -hmm. so i'll kind of leave that one behind and focus on these which i like instead of it just being like okay i have to upgrade this ability now even though i don't use it yeah so now it's just like okay i can just pretty much like ignore this one and buy whatever i want which is nice because like pretty much all the commanders there was at least like one ability that wasn't used really right yeah. Yep, I'll agree with that. Because I know a lot of people use Scipio for infantry or cavalry, but like they didn't, neither side got all of his abilities. So mm -hmm. if you wanted to play a cavalry Scipio, you'd use his cavalry abilities. If you wanted to play infantry, 
you'd use the other ones, which right. I feel it will be a nice change. Yeah, certainly. Yep. What do you think, Havoc? I agree. I mean, any any way you can add uniqueness to a game to where everyone doesn't feel like they're playing the same Arminius, the same Vercingetorix, yeah, or the too. same, you know, Miltiades or whatever, uh, just really just brings them, it makes them feel more involved and that developers care about them because they're able to do more customization. Yeah. Say what I think, I guess. Um... <laughs> Well, it's just yeah. yeah You're just, allowed just to throw I mean. my opinion in there. <laughs> yeah. I really do like the fact that your commander abilities are unlocking over time rather than yep. all yep. at once, because you were like, oh, I don't know these abilities. I'm new to the game. What? Why? What does this do? And and I'm starting to waste my points. Not waste, waste. But if you start spending on an ability that you're not using as much or isn't the best ability mm -hmm. for that yeah. commander, it's like. It's a you, waste. Can, you can focus on, all right, I've only got this ability. What is this? Okay, cool. I know what this is. Ah, oh, now I get another ability. Awesome. Right, and then I can get used to this one. And then you get mm -hmm. the third ability, which is your your bread and butter ability of the right. commander. So you, you kind of, you're getting used to everything. Like games that do that are always going to be better. Instead of throwing every feature, every ability, every thing right at you bat. straight away and overwhelm the player and then they go, ooh, I don't like this game. Like, just ease them yeah. into it, and then by the end... Having too much to micro from the very get-go is off-putting for a lot of people. It's just like, imagine imagine people that first ever played Miltiades and dropped shields because they didn't know what it did. Right. <laughs> it's like, whoops. It's like, <laughs> oh, well, now my unit's going to die horribly. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I upgraded this. <laughs> yep. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. So, the last point on my list of juicy secrets that are not secrets uh mm. visual customization but it's not confirmed or denied but it was mentioned like what what do we think what speculations or stuff like obviously we could talk about what was previously in arena but what do we yeah. think could improve on that or beyond so I suppose we could start with you overkill well, we know like from the last test, obviously the only not the last test, the um the previous alpha, the only things that they really had were color changes and then the cosmetic items that you could get from either testing or the humble bundle shield. And that mm -hmm. was pretty much that was it. Uh, I mean that's fine because like it's not a historical game, it's just historically based. So like I'm not too I don't really care about changing how units look, but at the same time I don't want them to lose what they look like. So, like, the Greeks and Roman helmets that you got from being a tester that you could put on all of the units, they weren't really, like, the Greek one was pretty, you know, stereotypical, so that was fine. But the Roman one was, like, a dark gray kind of, I don't know, thicker helmet. It kind of looked weird. So, like, if you can just take a, a unit, say, like, Praetorian Guard or something, and make them look, com like, nothing like Praetorian Guard, it right. kind of... It's a bit too much customization then that it's just like there's no point to call it what it is. Instead, it should just be like Romans tier 1 to 10. And you just dress them up however you want. Right. Yeah. Which, so like colors and special cosmetic items, I feel like, are as much as the game would need. Honestly. But I don't know. Yeah. Um, I mean, cosmetically, upgrades could change how units look. But even that can also kind of get into a historical situation so i'm not sure but i like i like being able to change colors again the uniqueness kind of a deal i think it'd be i mean again i definitely agree that too much customization can yes. just get way out there that's a lot of unnecessary time and development but i just think it would be cool to have especially in the higher tiers maybe the higher the tier is because those did tend to be more unique units so maybe the higher tier, you get a few more unlockable customization things. I think it'd be cool to have different, um, like different legion standards, kind of a deal for the higher tier Romans. You do yeah. something like, well, even had some cosmetic things like you could have different, you for your like chosen swordsman, I think, or one of the units. You could do a sword, you could do axes, or you could do you know different things like that. I think some of the archer units maybe had different types of arrows which were used for different situations. Uh, I think you could even get better bows. You know, I think stuff like that is really good and yeah. also caters to uniqueness. Again, a balancing would be the key. 
But um, any like I said, especially with these kinds of games, it would be really, really cool to have just to be able to customize clothing, even just for different types of clothing, have different types of shields, even different types of swords, you know, stuff like that would be really fun. Yeah, I kind of I completely forgot about the fact that units did have options in the, mm -hmm. <laughs> in the last test. But even like, still, um, like, yeah, the thing was with those, if, if I remember correctly, um, it was, yeah, you started out with a sword, but if you upgraded to an axe, it was better. And then if you upgraded this, it was better. Like, well, um, no, some units did have, if you had, you could choose a sword or an axe, the axe did more damage, but had less attack or something like that. There we like go. There so was, there was um, a balance to it. There was, yeah, there were trade-offs. Yeah. And like, uh, barbarian units could have armor or like wolf pelts to do yes. morale damage or defend themselves. I completely forgot about that. So yeah, that's, that's good. I'm, I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, on a purely cosmetic level and not unit options, mm -hmm. I like, I feel like colors and like, like you said, like, um, standards, banners, like right. stuff like that is, you know, good. But right. like, if it's so much that it changes what the unit's supposed to look like into hmm. something completely different, then that's a bit too much. I right. Feel. Right. Yeah, definitely. It shouldn't completely change the unit, as yeah. you say. Like, we've got to think that this is sort of historical themed. It's not historically mm -hmm. accurate. Yeah. Um, yeah. but when everyone's playing something like this, they see a Praetorian guard, like you said, and he's got the... He just looks like a Praetorian. That's what Praetorians look like. You don't want to start putting on, like, a... Lime green or hot pink shields and stuff like that. I mean, not so much for that. Even. But, like, just switching out he the helmet like a... for, like, an earlier um, Roman, like, Legion helmet, where it's just a simple right. one, no plumage, just, like... You wouldn't really want to do that, because it'd right. look both weird and, like, less completely like, historic awesome yeah. but yeah. i think the cult like i didn't mind the colors they were quite like so cool like you could mm -hmm. really make yours more unique but maybe it's not so much colors that need to change like obviously if you have fabrics you color is fine but if you had like armor like maybe have like just different types of armor color or materials mm -hmm. i'm not saying like bright gold shining kind of armor just to be obnoxious but like you could have yours like it's just a different type of no, metal would, yeah. or just something it would be cool to have like a veteran status armor you know like once you get certain to pass it like looks dented and scratched up and much more detailed whether yeah. a fresh unit has that you know polished look to it kind of as the old but yeah there's definitely some ways they could change it up uh, without going too much again you don't want to spend too much time purely on cosmetics yeah that's uh that's to me and i'm sure to a lot of other people that's a lot of wasted effort that they could be focusing on other things. Maybe so much wasted, but this early on, perhaps if they've got mm -hmm. a lot of stuff they need to do, yeah. then cosmetics right. should well, be like, like when they when the game right. cosmetics right. are are for way further down the road. Everything's running functionally, and then they can start putting in some cool cosmetic things. Yeah, a yeah. lot of longevity options do have like the fact of cosmetics being a thing. Mm -hmm. like, if you're playing a game, you often do like the fact that your unit is unique on the battlefield. Like, you have it in the World of Games where you can have, mm -hmm. um, like, liveries on your tanks or, like, different skins and different paint jobs and stuff that aren't completely right. out of historical accuracy, like, not completely wacky, but right. still make you unique. Like, your ship looks... Well, other people can get that same skin, but the likelihood of seeing it on the same match is on very small. So you're like, oh, right. awesome, my units stand out. Like... It's just something that is going to be cool to have later on down the line, and right. we'll be interested to see what ideas they come up with to make yeah. it good and not either too silly or just too small to even really bother with. It's mm -hmm. kind of like getting striking the good balance between right. both, I think. Definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> Certainly. So, yeah, that is us. For this arena cast that's got through all the points Sweet. I wanted to get through, and we're just literally passing the hour mark, so quite a good, like quite a good show there. So yeah, what we're going to do at the end of these arena casts is we're just going to basically go through from obviously right to left, like where to find us, and and just go from there really. So have a tell everybody where they can find you. YouTube H for Havoc fifteen. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all those other things, just H for Havoc. And 
Uh, yeah. Also, I'm going. No, I'm not going to do that. Never mind. Haha. Ha, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, overkill. Obviously. Well, YouTube, Overkill TW Total War, and on Twitter, it's Overkill underscore TW. Just to be different. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, obviously, I'm Axel Hunter. You can find me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Axel Hunter, uh, YouTube slash C slash Axel the Hunter TW. <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> obviously, I'm on Twitter. I'll probably link all our stuff down in the description as well. So you can just click, Very nice. click between us all and stuff and uh, do all that jazz. So, also, we could probably tack on a little bit of what we're doing on our channels, just so you know what do we do apart from being on the podcast so back to you havoc <laughs> um focus on uh strategy games primarily my big things right now are uh, total war and ultimate general civil war and then uh just a whole other mixed hodgepodge of things like eu4 so really focusing on strategy and grand strategy is my primary fo- focus cool well, if anybody's been paying any attention to my channel for the last like <laughs> month and a half, I, there's been nothing. Um, I'm going to be having a video out about that, um, just explaining what happened and blah, 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 blah. And I'll be starting some new series, hopefully, with uh, some Paradox games and probably Total War Warhammer. Um, and then on Twitch, I always do random campaigns and stuff. Um, so that'll all come back. And of course, living by, by myself and with better internet should all be better. Awesome. So yeah, I am also a Total War Strategy content creator. I'm currently running three series on my YouTube channel at the moment, which is Stellaris, Star Trek, Romulan. You've got Seeker 2 Game of Thrones Twitch export, which I'm doing with Lionheart and Jackie Fish. And the third one is a recent Ultimate Chaos mode campaign for Total War Warhammer. Nice. And on Twitch, kind of a bit mixture, head-to-head campaigns with Hef on a weekend, and just generals sprinkled streams every now and then mm-hmm. so yeah that's that's us us three for this arena cast we hope you've enjoyed uh this is not going to be as regular as you might hope because there's not a lot yeah, well. to talk about until the game gets further on down the line so this might be the first one and then it might be another couple of months before we get back yep. together yeah. for another It'll one happen. with a separate guest although havoc will obviously be welcome on <laughs> our lovely arena cast in the future so yep. yeah again Thank you for being here and uh, being a part of this first arena cast. And I'd so, like yeah. to end on this, asking everybody watching, what was your least favorite arena commander during the test? Because I can say mine was Miltiades because I never used him. I didn't hardly use any of the Greeks, so I'll just throw that out there. <laughs> what about you? What about I'd you, probably say Caesar because I wasn't a massive fan of the True. artillery. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. So comment down below on <laughs> Least favorite. all our channels for what's going on. All right. Peace. Peace. Bye-bye.